Hello, my precious children. So um, you guys know I'm not going to be here. You should have already at this point taken care of your warm up and you should have um, picked up this packet when you walked in the door. This packet tells you everything you need to do today as well as it also has everything you're going to need for the day in it. it has your notes, your homework, all that stuff. Told you that's what I was going to leave you, so that's what I'm leaving you. So um, we're going to be talking today about um, lines, and then we're going to spend Thursday and Friday also working on lines. We'll be doing some things different. So um, you should turn in today. You need to make sure that you turn in your Objective 5 homework. That is due today before you walk out the door. That was the homework you got last class period. Okay, and then you'll also need to make sure that you turn in this cover letter here. You can detach this letter, and you'll need to make sure that you have your name on this. Make sure that you've read through these and initialed numbers one through four over there, as well as um, where it says the bottom, you will turn in. Um, you can use that as well, or initial those as well, and then make sure you turn this page in. And then you'll need to make sure that you turn in your quiz that's due today. Now, if you do it online, that's fine. There is, um, as I'm sure you're aware by now, there's a QR code and a link down here at the bottom. It says you can do the quiz online if you haven't already taken care of that, which you should have. Um, and then, um, or if you decide to do the paper copy, that's fine as well. Just make sure to turn that in to Mr. Vega before you walk out the door. So I'm going to go stand at the document camera. Again, I am now standing in front of the screen. I am not standing on the document camera. We had this discussion last week because y'all were really confused. It looked like I'd been green screened in. I'm not. I'm just standing here. I'm standing in front of the class like I usually do. So now I'm going to go stand at the document camera. We're going to go through the notes, which won't take us too long. And then you'll have some time in class today to work. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, so we're talking today about objective three, which is our linear stuff. So um, first you need to understand what it means to be linear. And um, I know that sounds weird because you're like, well, duh, it's a line. Yes, that is true. It does mean that it's a line when you graph it. But in, for a situation, it means that if something is linear, that means that it has a starting point. It has a starting point and it increases or decreases. It increases or decreases at a constant rate. Okay, if it's linear, that means it has a starting point and then it increases or decreases at a constant rate. Okay, the equation of a line. Y equals what? What is the equation of a line? Y equals, yes, mx plus b. What does m stand for? Mm -hmm. Slope is correct. What about b, what does that represent? Yeah, your y-intercept. So m is your slope, b is your y-intercept. And thinking back to what we talked about last week, our linear parent function is y equals, yes, x. Very good. Okay, now we're going to talk specifically about slope for a second. Um, we all know what slope is. We know that it's our m value. Um, we will a lot of times call it our rise over run. And there's another phrase, and this is probably the most important of the phrases that talks about slope, and that phrase is rate of change. A lot of times on talks they will ask you, what's the rate of change of this line? And if you don't know what they mean by rate of change, then there's no way you can accurately answer the question. The last thing I want you to write down about slope is that it is always attached to x. It is always attached to X. And you spell attached A-T-T-A-C-H-E-D. It is always attached to X. Okay. So we're going to talk about how you find slope. We're going to start off with how you find slope from a graph. From a graph, that's when you rise overrun. You're going to need two points. I'm going to run underneath here. You'll need two points. And then from an equation, if you're trying to find your slope from an equation, then 
that means that um, you're looking for what's with x. So you're looking for your m value, which is with x or what's attached to x. All right, we have four different slopes. You guys are pretty good at these. We've talked about positive, negative, zero, and undefined all year. So positive, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. It's going to go up. Negative means that it goes down. Okay, zero slope. Think, think hard. Think hard about this one. Zero slope. Which way does that one go? Uh, it does go across. Remember, undefined is the one that goes up and down. Something I want you to remember is what the equation of a line with a slope of zero looks like and what the equation of an undefined slope looks like. So if it's zero, that means it's going to cross the y-axis and the equation is y equals some number. It's going to be a number. It could be y equals four, y equals negative a million, y equals 0.3. But if it's y equals and a number, it's a zero slope. If it's an undefined slope, that means this equation is x equals a number. A number. And again, it could be x equals 100, it could be x equals a million, x equals negative 0.2. If it's x equals a number, the line is going to be vertical. So if we look at question 15, what is the apparent slope of the line graphed below? Well, I'm looking at a graph, which means that I'm going to have to find my rise over my run. In order to find my rise over my run, I need two points. When we're looking for points, we want to make sure we're looking for good clean points where the line is intersecting on the grid lines. So for example, there would be a good clean point at positive one, negative one. And then I've got to find another one. There's a couple options. So where do you see points at that we can use? Okay. All right, so there was one at negative two, positive one, another one at negative five, positive three. There was one at positive four, negative three. And you can use any combination of these two points. Any of them will work. So I'm gonna use negative one, or one negative one, and negative two, positive one. And I'm gonna find my rise and my run. Well, my rise is two, and I'm going up, so it's positive. My run is one, two, three, I'm going left, so that makes it negative. So my slope, my rise over my run, would be two over negative three. And that would be my slope for this line, or negative two over three. Okay, 26 was to find the slope of the line identified by the equation y equals four x plus five y equals 20. In order for me to find that, I have to solve it for y first. So I'm going to draw my line, I'm going to label my sides, and if I'm solving for y, that means I want y's on one side, I want my x's and my numbers on the other side. So I'm going to take my 4x, I've got to move it over, so I'm going to minus it. So I have 5y equals 20 minus 4x. Okay, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. Exactly, I'm going to divide everything by 5. So y equals 20 divided by 5 is 4. I can't divide 4 by 5, so I'm going to leave it as 4 over 5x. And I was looking for my slope. If you remember, your slope is always with x or attached to x. So in this case, it would be negative 4 over 5, which is answer choice h. So remember, your slope is always with x. It's not always what's first or what's second. It's just wherever x is. Okay. Next page, what happens when you change the slope? So something you're going to have to do on tax is you're going to have at least one problem where it talks about the effects of the graph once you change the slope. So, when our slope gets bigger, if our slope is getting bigger, so you can imagine that this line right here, this blue pen represents a line that has a slope, any slope doesn't matter, it's positive. If my slope gets bigger, well then my line is going to get in a way where we would call bigger as well. And that actually, the line gets steeper. So the slope gets bigger, the line gets steeper. 
if our slope gets smaller, then our line gets, now this is kind of weird, because you would want to say flatter. That's the word you would want to use to be the opposite of steeper, which is true. But on the tax test, they say less steep. Okay? So if my line gets, if my slope gets smaller, my line gets less steep. All right, what about if you change the y-intercept, our b-value? Well, this is similar, very similar, almost the exact the same thing as when we changed this y-intercept in our parabolas, in our quadratics from last week. If our y-intercept gets bigger, that means that my line shifts up. If my y-intercept gets bigger, my line shifts up. So then what happens if my y-intercept gets smaller? Yeah it will shift down. Okay, so we got two, two questions down here. Number two, or 26, I'm sorry. The graph of the line of a linear function is shown below. If the line is translated two units down, which equation will best describe the new line? Well, if I'm translating it, what's another word for translate? Yeah, I'm going to shift it. So I'm shifting it down two units. Am I changing my slope or am I changing the y-intercept? That means my y-intercept is going to change. Very good. So my y-intercept changes. Well, right now my y-intercept is at positive 3. If I'm shifting it down 2, translating it down 2, my y-intercept ends up at positive 1. So I know that my answer is either F or G. I'm going to go ahead and mark out H. I'm going to mark out J. So the next question for you is, did the slope change? No, it didn't. That's right. Because the only thing that changed was the y-intercept. It said it translated down between the shifted down. So if I can find the slope of this line here, then I'm going to be able to find the slope of my new line. So I'm going to find two points. Well, I have one on the y-axis. Um, where's another point I can use? Okay. 3, 4 is one, or negative 3, 2 is another one. Doesn't matter which set. So I'm going to find my slope. I'm going to rise and run. So my rise is 1. My run is 1, 2, 3. And I was going up and right. They're both positive directions. So my new sl my slope, sorry, not my new slope, my old slope, and the same slope is 1 over 3. So G would be my correct answer. F would not be right because F shows the slope changing. Okay, 43. The line represented by the equation Y equals 3 over 2X plus 3 is graphed below. Which of the following best describes the effect on the graph when the slope is doubled? What does it mean to double something? Yeah, I'm going to multiply it by 2. So if I have my slope, what was my original slope of my line? Of my original line? Think back up this equation. What's the slope? Yeah, it's the 1 with x, so it's 3 over 2. And I'm supposed to double it, which means I'm going to multiply it by 2. If you don't know what 3 over 2 times 2 is, put it in your calculator. Please put it in your calculators. Okay, I love you, but I don't want you to screw the easy math up. So I'm going to do 3 over 2 times 2, and it tells me that it's positive 3. So my new slope is 3. So I've got a couple options here. One, we can look at it and figure out the answer logically. Two, we can graph it. I'm going to do both. I'm going to graph it first, then we're going to talk about logically what that, or actually let's do this. We're going to talk about logically what's going to happen, then we're going to check it with our graph. Okay, so if my slope is doubled, that means it's getting bigger. And what do we say happens if your, line, if your slope gets bigger? What happens to your line? That's right, it's going to get steeper. So, right now, here's my line. And it said that my slope gets bigger, so my slope's going to double. It's going to get steeper. So my new line would kind of shift and become more of a vertical line. Now, not quite straight up and down, but it's going to be more vertical. So it maybe would look something, and this is not necessarily correct. You don't have to draw this, but it would maybe look something like this. That's an example of what it would look like. So if 
if I changed my slope, well, first of all, did my y-intercept change? Did it tell me that my y-intercept changed? No, it didn't. That's right. So we know it's not A. We know it's not B. So we look at C or D, which says the x-intercept increases or the x-intercept decreases. Well, my original x-intercept was at negative 2. When I drew the line steeper, my x-intercept was at negative 1. It moved to the right. So did it increase or decrease? Yeah, it increased. So I'm thinking C is my answer. I'm going to graph this. So I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to type in the original equation, which was 3 over 2x plus 3. And then I'm going to graph my new equation. Well, what did we say our new slope was? We doubled the slope, and so we said that it was 3. It's down here. So 3x, did my y-intercept change? So it's still plus 3. And I'm going to make my second line thicker. So if you'll move your cursor all the way over here to the left, where you see it doing this, it kind of looks like your line just moving up and down. Um, and you'll hit enter, that'll change your line thicker so you can see what happens to the graph. So I'm going to graph it, there's my first line, and there's my second line. So here's my original x-intercept, I'm going to move my cursor over so we can see it numerically because that helps, at about negative 2, negative 1, something like negative 2.1. And my new y-intercept is at negative 0.85, so it did get bigger, it did increase, it shifted to the right. So our logic was correct, so C is the correct answer. Okay. All right, y and x-intercepts. Okay, a y-intercept, what's the definition, or where do you find y-intercepts? Very good. So it's on the y-axis. What does a y-intercept look like in an ordered pair? What does a y-intercept look like in an ordered pair? Okay, it's zero, then a number. That's our y-intercept. So x-intercept would be on the x-axis. And what would it look like in an ordered pair then? Very good, it would be a number and then zero. Okay, we're only going to do um, two of these. We're going to look at seven. We're going to look at 53 and seven because you've actually done recently 49 and then the bottom one on the right. We did those on our warm-up last week. So 53, what is the y-intercept of the function graph below? Well, ideally, we would love it if we could continue drawing this line all the way down until it intersects with the y-axis. The problem is that my graph stops. So where else can I go, if I know I have a line, where can I go that will find my y-intercept for me? Very good, I can put it in stat edit. So I'm going to go to stat, already, so I'm try that again, I'm going to press stat, edit, I put my x is in L1, which is 10 and 6, my y is in L2, 17 and 3. You should be doing this too, by the way. So those of you who haven't done so already, open your calculators and turn them on. They're only useful if they're open and on. You should be in stat. You should be entering these numbers. Now I'm going to go back to stat over to calc, and which option do I press? Very good, number four. And it told me that, um, let's see, equation is ax plus b. It said b is negative 18. So this right here, negative 18, is my y-intercept. Now, something I will tell you, because... For me, I would have much rather, I don't like using the calculator, I'd rather figure it out by hand. So I would have wanted to draw the line all the way out. And I know some of you probably would have too. If you want to do that, remember the very back page of your tax test is a big sheet of graph paper. That's all it is. And you're welcome to draw your own graphs back there. So this would be a great problem that you could use on that graph paper. Okay, number seven. Scientists developed the linear model shown below, show to the, um, show below to show the relationship between altitude or elevation above sea level and air temperature. According to the model, what would be the air temperature at an altitude of zero feet? Well, again, this is linear. I'm looking for when the altitude, my x's, are zero. So if my x's, my altitude is zero, then I am looking for my y-intercept. That's what I'm trying to find. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this graph. Um, I love you. Please don't freehand this. 
use something straight edge to draw it with, whether that's your formula chart, your folder, another piece of paper. You will notice I never even freehand my own lines. I always draw them based on something else. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my line. And then I'm also going to go ahead and extend my x-axis. I'm going to go ahead and extend my x, my, I'm sorry, my y-axis. So that I can see what that would look like. So my y-intercept would be this point here. And I'm going to label, if I'm thinking I'm going 5, 10, 15, 20, 40, 45, what's this next line up here going to be? Mm -hmm. Very good. So if I'm looking for my y-intercept, I know it's bigger than 50, which means it's not 16. It's also not 45, so A and B are out. Well, I'm left with two hand choices, C or D. Out of C and D, which of those seems to be the most logical for an answer choice? Keep in mind that this is 50, and here is my y-intercept. Do you think it's 59 or 77? I'm going to go with 59 too. I think that's a little bit better option. And we could always check that because we could mark off another five, which if I'm kind of guessing, I'm saying five would be about here. That would be 55. And another five would be about here, which would be my 60. And it looks like it's really close to 60. Now my measurements are off a little bit and that's okay, but I'm getting an estimate. So, and you could also put this problem in stat edit and I promise you that it would give you 59. Okay, last page of our notes. Can you answer questions like number 44? Which equation best represents the line that passes through the point negative 1, 4 and 3, 2? Well, how do you do these? You've got two options. Yeah, both those are right. You could do this in stat edit. Or you could go to y equals. Either answer, either option is going to be acceptable. They will both work. So, um, I'm going to tell you that the answer is, drum roll please, I think it's G. Let's see, I'm going to go to Y equals, let's see how good I am. I'm going to go to Y equals. I have negative 1 half X plus 9 over 2. And I'm going to go look at my table. And I'm looking for negative 1, positive 4. Oh, I was not right. It's not G. That means it's F. I don't know if y'all saw that. Negative 1, positive 4 was not there. I had negative 1, positive 5. So that meant that that was the wrong answer. So I'm going to go back to Y equals, so it's got to be F. Let's see. Negative 1, 4. There it is. Positive 3, 2. There it is. So whoop, that's our answer. Hopefully some of you just got that, by the way. Others of you are going, huh? I don't understand. Just ask your neighbor who's laughing at me right now. 42, same type problem. Which function represents a line that contains the point 212 and has a slope of negative 3? Um, first of all, so we don't want to remind you of this f of x notation here, that is the exact same thing as y equals. So it's okay that it's there. You can treat that as y equals. And it's the same thing. Um, they told us that our line had a slope of negative 3. Well, if you will notice, all of these had a slope of negative 3. So we can't eliminate any answers. So it's just trying to figure out which one contains the point 212. So you cannot put this in stat edit. Why can you not put this in stat edit? Yeah, I only have one point, it won't work. So I have to do this in y equals, or you can plug in two for x and see which one gives you the right answer. I'm gonna let you figure that one out on your own. Okay, the very last thing we're gonna talk about is direct variation. You need to remember this, because this is so important, and this is on tax. It's on tax every single time, and it's really easy. If you see the phrase direct variation or varies directly, that means to divide, so direct is divide, Direct is divide, direct is divide, direct is divide, direct is divide. And you're going to divide y by x. That's all you gotta do. Y divided by x. We had a problem similar to this on our benchmark at some point. I think 20 was actually it. So 20. Two quantities, x and y, are in a relationship in which y varies directly. There's that phrase. 
with x. The graph of this function contains the point negative 1628. Which of the following represents this relationship? Well, a lot of you want to go to y equals, and that's fine, but you can do it way easier than that. Because I know it says very directly, I need to divide y by x. They gave me an x and a y in this ordered pair here. Remember, in an ordered pair, it is always x, then y. So thinking that it's negative 1628, what is my fraction going to look like here? Is it going to be negative 16 over 28 or 28 over negative 16? Very good. It's 28 divided by negative 16. Well, take my hand handy little calculator, which will do my math for me. I'm going to do 28 divided by negative 16. Math, enter, enter, and it tells me it's negative 7 over 4. So my answer would be G. See how easy that was? Just say yes, Mr. Krim, it was really easy. I'm still waiting. Very good. Okay, 28. If Y is directly proportional, okay, this is a little bit different, but it still says that same word, directly proportional. Okay, so if it tells, here, here's a thought. If it says proportional, what, I know this is going to be really hard for you. If it says proportional, what do you think we ought to use to solve this problem? Very good, we're going to use a proportion. So we're going to have a proportion, but because it's directly, we're still going to have Y over X. So y is directly proportional to x, and y is 12 when x is 16. Well, there's my first y and x, 12 and 16, and I'm going to label them. Because I told y'all last week, when I do proportions, I always label them. It helps so much. Okay, so then what is the value of x when y is 5? So what's the other piece of information I'm given? What other number do I know? Yeah, I know that y is 5. I don't know what x is, so I'm going to leave it as x. And then I'm going to cross multiply and divide. So I'm going to do 16 times 5, which is 80. So 80 equals 12x. I cross multiply to do the butterfly method or the box method, however you learned it. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 12. So 80 divided by 12. x equals 6.66 repeating. There's a whole bunch of 6's out there. Okay. Now, I don't have an answer choice that says 6.66666. So you're first, like, oh, math, enter, enter. Okay, math, enter, enter. Okay, that gives me 20 over 3. Well, I don't have an answer choice that says 20 over 3 either. Now, some of you are thinking, Miss Krim, seriously, we already know what the answer is. I mean, come on, really? But just give me a second. Give me a second, I'll get there. Okay, your next option, because neither of these answer choices showed up, and some of you are still like, I don't really know which one it is. You need to plug in your answer choices and see what they are. We have talked about this before. You may not remember it, but we have talked about it. If I want to type in 1 and 1 third, then I type in 1 plus 1 third. And that is 1.3 repeating. If I want to type in 3 and 3 fourths, I'm going to do 3 plus 3 fourths. 3.75. I'm going to do 6 plus two-thirds, 6.6 .6 repeating. And just to continue with the pattern, three-fourths is 0.75. So which of these answer choices gave me the same answer? Very good, it was H, 6.6 .6 repeating. Okay, I'm not gonna do 60, just because I know y'all probably tired of listening to me talk, even though I'm not there. I know you miss me dearly, dearly. I wish I could say I felt the same way. Ha, oh, just kidding, I do miss you. But I'll be back on Thursday and Friday, and when I come back on Thursday and Friday, we will um, work on some lines, and we're going to do, um, we won't just be sitting in class, um, we'll have some other fun stuff, well, we will be in class probably, we will have some other fun and exciting things to do. So, alright, the way the rest of class is going to go, at this point, you should now be looking at your homework. Okay, I realize it's it's three pages front and back. I know that. I made it. But if you'll look, it's only 18 problems. That's not bad. Okay, so all you have to do is you need to complete these 18 problems. You have time in class right now. I would get this done if I were you. You all know you don't like to do homework anyways, so don't waste class time. Take care of this now. And it even tells you up here, this is due Thursday and Friday. 
Okay, now that means that for A day, it's due on Thursday because Thursday is an A day. And it's due on Friday for B days. Don't come, for my 2A and my 3A, do not come to me and tell me, well, you said it was due on Friday. No, it's due whichever of these days you have class, which for A days is Thursday, B days is Friday, okay? So, please, please, please be on your absolute best behavior. I am here on campus, so you may see me a little bit. I'm just giving the test, the tax test, we did talk about that. So, keep in mind, if there is a problem, I will come deal with it right away. Y'all know that, and y'all don't want to play around. So, please be on your absolute best behavior, which you always are. I know you will be. And again, as always, for the best class, and I'm talking the absolute best out of all four of my classes, I will bake for y'all, okay? So, out of 2A, 3A, 3B, and 4B, whichever one of y'all four is the absolute best, I will bake for you, okay? And you will get it either on Thursday or Friday, depending on which day you have class. And I know, B-Day, I still owe y'all stuff. I will take care of y'all on Friday, I promise, when I'm here. So, um, have a great day, and I will see you guys later this week. Bye!